So it's a nice day. My voice is feeling a little bit better. And then I decided I was going to read The Girl Next Door and boom, there goes your mood. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we have steamrolled into October now. It's been quite eventful, hasn't it? Lots of things going on on the channel and off and in real life and, of course, in the real world. But here, guys, we're here to talk about the fictional world of books because that's what we do here. So, guys, let's do like usual. Let's talk about what am I reading. Now, you do know uh, I've been reading The Bone Hunters uh, about like chapter 13, I think. Uh, I did stop at kind of the midway point. Uh, yeah, I'm already 618 pages in, so that's impressive, right? Uh, and the thing was, is like I had to stop in the middle of it to record my first spoiler talk video, so I had to pick up something else in the meantime, and that's why I decided to pick up uh, The Girl Next Door, which is the first one of my spooky season reads, and I ended up reading like almost the whole thing. Uh, guys, the thing is, is you read a book like this after you've been reading a book like this. And guys, this is like chugging water. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's a you got all your big heavy chewing with this one. This is just straight up guzzling because uh, very easy to read, uh, but it is quite a downer. It is quite a downer. Is uh you know was was kind of told to me, so it's not like it's a big shocking surprise. Word. But literally, all I got left, guys, is just the epilogue. That's all I have left in this book. Uh, but uh, I, I'm going to get more into it uh, in a future video. But uh, yeah, lots to to discuss with that book. But uh, I, I think. It's just one of those things where I've had more reading time. You know, I said that uh, I wasn't going to be able to make as many videos because my voice was was scratched up. Uh, so I made some some quick ones this week. None that really took a, a lot of effort, really, besides that Malazan one, which, again, I was just, you know, kind of just, you know, reading my notes I made while I was reading it. That's really all those videos are. So uh, while I was kind of waiting for my voice recover, I've been reading at an exorbitant amount of time, even though uh, I, I did get told lately that reading as many books as I do a month is apparently bad for you, uh, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, guys, when you don't watch TV, you'd be amazed how much time you have on your hands when you don't uh, get on social media a lot, uh, except Discord. I am guilty of that. But again, I am not judging. You do what works for you, and that is what's been working for me this week is The Bone Hunters and The Girl Next Door. Now, let's move along, guys, to what am I going to read? Now, I'm going to obviously read the second half of Bone Hunters. That's obviously my goal here. Will I be able to knock it out this week? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do have a you know uh, the three day weekend. Uh, I got a couple of little league baseball games, and yeah, I, I read at my kids' little league games. You know, it's no big deal. When he's in the field, and when he's at bat, I watch. When he's sitting in the dugout, I got no problems just reading my book in the bleachers. It's not a big deal to me. Uh, but uh, after that, so I'll be finishing Girl the Next uh, Girl Next Door probably here today. Uh, but uh, I'll go ahead and start the next spooky season read, which is Heart Shaped Box. I don't have a physical one of that. I got it just on this. Uh, yeah, just a good old digital copy. I got all the Joe Hill stuff on digital. It was one of those things, like, I was like, do I really want to start collecting Joe Hill stuff, too? Because then I'll do, like, his dad and feel like I got to get everything in hardcover stuff. So I didn't. So I, I, I resisted the urge, and I just got it on Kindle. But uh, I'm excited to read that. I have read Nosferatu, so I know I like his style. And I've heard pretty good things about Heart Shaped Box as well. And uh, if I finish all this stuff, guys, this week, I guess I'll dip into that really short Harlan Ellison book, I Have No Mouth, and I Must Scream, a book I've heard a lot about, but I still have no idea what it is about. I've just heard it will kind of stick in your head for a few days, and I could use something to push childhood's end out of my head, honestly. So uh, I, I could use a good thinker, I think, obviously, besides Malazan. That's just that's just different, guys. That's like, that's if, if, if this is a file cabinet over here, Malazan's like this, like, database over here, you know? So uh, that, it's kind of just a different side of the brain, I, I, I think. But uh, let's move along, guys, to this week on the channel. Now, yes, I did take a trip with my wife out of town, for uh, last weekend, it was our 11th wedding anniversary. We decided to get this really nice bed and breakfast just outside town. No, no kids, stuff like that. You know, just kind of a change of scenery, relax. You know, enjoy each other's company. And of course, then I got sick. Yeah, I did get uh, the the good old strep throat. That's why I've been sipping on tea here all week. Uh, so the voice, I think, is getting better and better. But it was a real romantic to be like, hey, cool, we're finally alone. And then you get sick, you know. And uh, I was just afraid of getting her sick and stuff like that. So uh, I, I couldn't sleep either because I was coughing. I was in pain, you know. So I read a lot. And that's how I got such a big start on M uh, Malazan this month. But uh, 
I pretty much just resigned myself. I wasn't going to be making any content this week. I had already made my off the books uh, for the uh, month of September, which was my top sci-fi novels of all time. So I slid that to Sunday. or Not, not novels, I'm sorry, movies, sci-fi movies. And I went ahead and slid it to Sunday, and I thought that might be the only video I'm able to get up this week. And then I just said, you know what? <clears throat> People... They were expecting no content. Let me see if I can give them some low energy content with the voice. Now, if you watch that uh, that first one, I did my September wrap up. In that video, I was struggling pretty bad. I had to cut the camera five or six times because I was coughing and hacking up stuff that you guys didn't want to see. Trust me. And um, it was just one of those things where I was like, "Look, uh, I just I have to make content, guys. It's just it's something that I have to do. I have to talk about these things. I have to get them out." And I felt like because I've got like a pre-established schedule. For September and October, and I felt like if I fell uh, if I fell behind a week, I was gonna have to start cutting out some stuff that I wanted to do for spooky season. I didn't want to do that, so I went ahead and said, "Hey, let's go ahead and uh, play through the pain here," and that's what we did. And so it was just a you know quick one, a September wrap up, and then I did my fall 2021 TBR, talking about everything I'm gonna read in October, November, December. Now I knew I'd already made that video for spooky season, but I want to go ahead and put it in there because I, just, I do these for each quarter and you know it's someone kind of brought up it's kind of weird the way this, the seasons don't exactly go by the quarter here uh so i think starting next year i'm going to change the title of those to uh you know quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four i think that that's not a big deal it's just something that you know i like to give you guys a peek behind the curtain here that's what i'll, I'll be doing there but I, I always love talking about what i plan to read uh you know a quarter at a time in case anybody wants to jump on and, and read with me like i said in that video i'm going to be reading anna smith's godblind trilogy in december and i've had a few people say they, they would love to join for that uh for november i'm going to be reading the the wayward pines trilogy by blake crouch and some people have said they're going to jump on for that and then i kind of pre-announced that in january we're going to be doing memory sorrow and thorn by tad williams and i've already had a lot of feedback of people that are interested in doing that one so that's kind of the point of a tbr video it isn't uh hey look at the 47 books i'm going to read this month never it's more of a hey i'm going to be reading this and it's not really a read-along but if you guys want to read it as well since i'll be covering it on the channel this is your chance to you know get get copies of it and decide if that's what you want to do or if you want to listen to it or whatever it is that works for you. So yeah, look, I pushed out more content this week than I thought I was. You know, the zero that I had planned this week, and the whole thing with the Bone Hunters doing the spoiler talk number one was I had said last month because no one watched those uh, spoiler talk videos anymore, and it wasn't because it, I, I don't think that I don't think that they're bad or anything like that. It was more of I'm realizing I don't know if there's that many people still aboard on their read along to watch those, but uh, with how much I'm enjoying the Bone Hunters guys, I felt like you know what I've got to detox. I have to get this out. I had planned on just doing one one video for the whole book, you know, uh, to kind of to sum that up. But this book is monstrous, you know. It's it's two books pressed together. I believe is what Mr. Erickson has said. So uh, I, I had to kind of detox. So I went back on that, and you know what. I've kind of got the attitude now about Malazan stuff with the Stephen King and the Michael Crichton stuff. Uh, you know what? Over time, people are going to watch it. And that's why I kind of say in that video, if you're watching this, if you're still on the read-along, cool. If you're watching this a year from now, hey, I guess it still works for you. So uh, like the Wheel of Time videos, it still get watched, you know, by people who are checking out the series for the first time. I'm hoping maybe the Malazan ones can be like that for people as well. So I still don't think I'll be bringing back best characters and uh, the, the veteran talks. Uh, but I will be doing the two spoiler talks and the standard review up through the end. And then after it's over, maybe then I'll have some uh, some veteran talks. You know, I was supposed to talk to Mr. Erickson uh, before before uh, we started the Bone Hunters. Uh, he had said he was cool uh, with doing it. And I just I messaged him, hey, when's good for you? I'd like to get uh, this going before before we get to Bone Hunters. And he hasn't gotten back to me. And I don't want to I don't want to pester him. So <laughs> I've been kind of afraid to message him and be like, oh, uh, yeah, so about that. So uh, it, whenever we get to speak with him, awesome. You know, if it's not until we're done with the series, okay, cool. Uh, I get to speak with another major published author. That's a, that's a gift. That's a blessing for me. I'm excited to do it, no matter if it's now or if it's, you know, next you know, June, July when we finish this series. So it's exciting times on the channel for sure. And I'm glad that there are a lot of you still on board with me on this read along and the ones who are still there are right there with me guys and that holy crap it feels like it's worth it because bone hunters has been fantastic let's talk about a little next week plans the voice is getting better so i'm going to try to uh push out some numerous things next week depending on how 
this progresses. I feel like it's gotten better each day. I still got a little bit of rasp in there. I'm sure you can hear it. So I always got to feel like I've always got to be clearing my throat. But we're almost there. I feel like I've got some rejection now. You know, before I couldn't really even do that. But, uh, I, you know, I did bump my Uzumaki review. I wanted to wait till my voice was better to do that because I know there are some uh, fans of manga who uh, have been waiting for me to do more manga stuff. And I want to make sure that, you know, uh, I present my best voice. Uh, so uh, I, what I did is I just flipped it. Bone Hunters, I plan on doing that Bone Hunters spoiler talk next week and do an Uzumaki this week. I just flipped those. So next we'll be getting the Uzumaki review. A uh, very, very creepy, creepy story. And uh, there's lots to play to talk about. I'll also be doing a review for The Girl Next Door. I wasn't sure I was going to do a review for it, but after I've read it, I was like, man, there's a lot to talk about with this book because holy shit, man. Uh, so we'll be doing those two reviews. And then I thought, you know what? It is spooky season. And I can't do any spooky season without any H.P. Lovecraft, right? I looked at my schedule and I was like, I'm not reading any new Lovecraft this month. And I'm not planning on discussing any of his books. But I was like, what have I not done with Lovecraft? People do love them a top 10 list, right? So I said, how about I do my top 10 H.P. Lovecraft tales of terror? You can't really call them books because they're like the Conan stories. And they are all mostly short stories except Out the Mouth of Madness, which I've already reviewed on the channel. So I said, hey, uh, I could talk about my 10 favorite Lovecraft tales because that's always a good time to talk about the legend H.P. Lovecraft and his really, really creepy, tentacly monsters. And we'll be doing that sometime next week, most likely if my voice holds up. And then, of course, I'll be closing it down with my September book haul. There are There's one more thing I'm waiting to get in the mail before I do it. And I'm counting it towards September because I ordered it in September. So uh, I, when I get that in the mail, I'll be doing that video probably sometime next week. So full week ahead next week and uh, i'm hoping to get back to normal here not that things really slowed down all i did was push everything back a day and then flip a couple on the schedule uh but you know this i'd like this to get back to uh you know the quality that i know you guys have come to expect and the quality that i that the standard that i hold myself up to and that is uh you know not sounding like i've been chain smoking for the last like six years straight you know seven packs a day uh that's pretty much it for the books guys there are a couple of tv and movie talk things and even some gaming stuff i want to talk about here while we were at that B&B, they did have Netflix. So we went ahead and we powered through Midnight Mass. It was something I've been putting off. I thought maybe let's put it off until October, you know, for spooky season. It didn't really kind of, I mean, I guess it wasn't October. It just wasn't quite the, the atmosphere I expected, you know. But hey, we watched all seven episodes over that weekend. And guys, what a shock. Mike Flanagan, again, home run. Every single time this guy is undefeated for me, he has not made anything that I would call bad at this point. Uh, I love the way that he tells stories. He just finds a way to make you care about his. No other horror director does this or writer. They don't. They don't feel like they don't make it to where all their characters matter. So when bad shit starts happening, you give a damn about it. I feel like he has found that secret formula that no one else can find in horror. And he's just so far ahead of everyone else where you can be like, you watch it, you're like, oh, there's not a lot of horror. But you know what? When those horror moments happen, man, do they count. And this one, guys, this is the most Stephen King thing he has ever done. And it's not one of his Stephen King adaptations. You know, he did Gerald's Game. He did Dr. Sleep, which are actual Stephen King adaptations. This, guys, is a mashup of about two or three Stephen King books. I don't want to tell you which three because it will spoil some of the surprises in it. But it is like usual, guys. It kept me guessing all the way. My wife and I were theorizing between each episode. It's really, really good stuff. And tell you how, how good Mike Flanagan is, guys. She does not like horror. And she was even ranking Mike Flanagan stuff. So that's how much she really appreciates his work. So, uh, yeah, I think he's just fantastic. He is definitely a generational talent, in my opinion. Uh, I think when I made that list, is I, I had The Haunting of Bly Manor at the bottom. And I loved Haunting of Bly Manor. So it's like if something as amazing as Haunting of Bly Manor is at the bottom of this guy's list, generational talent for sure. And I think he is. And I think Netflix knows this too because not only does he have a series plan for next year, which is going to be Midnight Club, which is an adaptation of the, uh, the, uh, was the Christopher Pike novels, uh, but he is, the year after that, They've already got him inked to do another miniseries on Netflix 
based on Edgar Allan Poe's works. Usher, I, I can't believe this, guys. This is amazing. Outside of him doing another Stephen King, I can't think of someone I'd like to see him adapt more than some Edgar Allan Poe. This is going to be amazing. I hope that this leads to him eventually getting Dark Tower on Netflix. I hope they snatch up those rights because I know that is his dream project. And as a Stephen King constant reader, that is my dream adaptation is Mike Flanagan adapting long form the Dark Tower series. I think it would be amazing. So uh, yeah, great, great times for horror. Great times for Mike Flanagan fans. And guys, Midnight Mass, again, bravo. So some of the best acting that I've seen in some of his shows. I love how he recycles a lot of his actors. It's almost in like that American Horror Story kind of thing where you just kind of recycle a lot of the same actors. It almost seems like they're playing different parts. But uh, yeah, some new ones this time. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Linklater, uh, the play that played uh, Father Paul in that. Man, what a performance by that guy. So yeah, there's several people that just steal the show this season. It was good to see Saracen from Friday Night Lights again. I hadn't seen him in a while. But yeah, Midnight Mass, guys, check it out. It is amazing. And for that's for the reason, guys, I'll never get rid of Netflix because they keep bringing some of the original content that other providers aren't giving me as much. So thumbs up, guys. Check out Midnight Mass if you haven't yet. Hey, I got my Dune tickets. Uh, it's going to be the first thing I've seen in the theaters since I think I took my kid to see Shazam. Or maybe Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. I think we went to the drive-in to see that right before the world ended. But uh, Dune, there was no way you're going to keep me away from that. Uh, it's uh, two weeks from uh, from yesterday is when I'll be seeing it in IMAX. And the tickets were expensive. And guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I would have paid more. It's Dune, right? But uh, yeah, I got my IMAX tickets. Wife and I, we already got a sitter. We are excited and ready for it. Cannot wait. Uh, and then we'll probably watch it again over that weekend on HBO Max. And uh, it's not we don't have like an official date for it yet or anything, but I will be doing a spoiler review of the movie with my friend and closest confidant, Mr. Christopher Rocchio of Sun Eater fame. We will be doing a spoiler review of the movie and obviously probably, I guess, of the book because we'll be talking about what is like the book, what is not. And uh, I, I, I'm sure we'll talk at least two hours on that one because I don't think I don't think Christopher and I get together and talk anything less than like two and a half hours. So I'm sure talking about a Dune adaptation. We'll have plenty to talk about. And this is only half the book. It's amazing time. So great time to be a Dune fan, guys. I'm excited to do it, obviously. And uh, I guess we're getting into uh, some, some spooky season movies that we're watching around the house. Uh, this year, we're kind of putting a focus on my nine-year-old because he's getting right to that point where he really, really likes horror. And uh, he's not ready quite for the uh, you know, blood-curdling scary stuff yet. But we're kind of sinking him in slowly here. You know, we did Tremors last week. This week, we did The Lost Boys. And uh, I don't want to say that this is like his first vampire, because he watched some Buffy the Vampire Slayer stuff with me. But I think this is the most adult vampire movie he's watched yet. And uh, yeah, it's an 80s movie. It's got that 80s cheese that, you know, if you grew up around it, you love it. If you didn't, you think, why do you guys like this? Uh, but yeah, awesome soundtrack and uh, just uh, some great all-around performances from, you know, from the Corys, obviously. Uh, my nine-year-old wants to be one of the Frog Brothers now. And um, uh, just Kiefer. I mean, Kiefer was just the man, which, which obviously he's already drawn these connections. He's like, hey, that's Ace from Stand By Me. It's like, there you go, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, so um, maggots, Michael, you're eating maggots. It's just such a such a just a classic movie. Uh, I love it. I've never seen the sequels because I thought that those were you know it was it had been too long. But uh, you know, R.I.P. to uh, to the other Corey and, and and I guess M.I.A. to you know Corey Feldman. So, but uh, good times and Lost Boys. I think uh, a good one. Age appropriate, just great. He, he enjoyed the movie a lot. Never really got scared or anything. So, uh, if you guys haven't seen Lost Boys yet, what are you doing here? Go go watch it. It's fun. It's a good old time. Now I want to close it down by some gaming talk here, guys. And uh, I know everybody's mostly right now is talking about Far Cry Six or Metroid Dread. Look, I want both of those games. But what I want to talk about is one I did go ahead and pick up, which is Alan Wake Remastered. Alan Wake is a game that came out about, gosh, what, 15 years ago now on the uh, so Xbox 360, I think, is when I had it on. And what was so amazing about this game, guys, is it's not a Stephen King game, but it's a Stephen King game. Does that make sense? It's like you could basically visualize that this was written by Stephen King. I think it's the closest we'll probably ever get to a Stephen King adaptation. They even references Stephen King in the opening line. You know, Stephen King once wrote, and it's, you know, you're, you're basically 
an author in Maine and some weird shits going down. You know, it's a very, very cool game. If you like like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, things like that, I think you're going to uh, find a lot to like here. It's not quite as, uh, you know, shoot 'em up as those two games are. I don't think Silent Hill, I would really call it a shoot 'em up. Resident Evil kind of falls into that every once in a while, but a uh, very, very spooky game. And yes, a lot of Kingisms in there. So uh, I think it's a game that everyone will enjoy, but it's constant readers will absolutely eat that game up because it feels like you are playing and watching a Stephen King book. It really is that good. I think it's captured that essence. Kind of like what Mike Flanagan did with Midnight Mass, where it feels like a Stephen King story, even if it's not by Stephen King. And they remastered it. They remastered it for the uh, for the PC and I think the consoles. I don't know. I got it on PC. I haven't actually played it yet, but I was watching some gameplay footage of it, and it looks remarkable where they put it up right next to it and show you the comparison screens. Uh, so just like Actraiser last week, guys, it is a renaissance of you know some remasters where i feel like okay they're doing these remasters right now they're rebuilding them from the ground up instead of you know just this fresh coat of paint i'm excited to to get into playing it and i just want to recommend it if you guys haven't played it. if you're a big king fan and you miss it the first time around hey you ain't got to worry about it being too dated now i think you'll have plenty there that you like but guys that was my week what was your week like drop in the comments let me know what you're reading what you're watching what you're listening to what you are playing and have yourselves an awesome weekend <laughs>